17th card is the star card, which of course was transposed by Crowley because Zaddy is not the star. So it's transposed with the Emperor card. Okay, so it's all out of sequence. So he's now saying here, the fifth letter is to do with this one, the 17th card. So he represents Aquarius, the water bearer, and you as our Lady of the Stars. Again, he goes very much into this. This, he, what you can see here is her arm. She's she's she has two kind of vases or something, which reflects, in a way, the card of the art card, which has this transposing of the jugs of water and everything else. And she also represents the the whirling swastika, not the Nazi swastika, but it is the swastika. It's the whirling of the energies. Okay. And he quotes uh, the vision for the Lake Pasquani, nothing less but twinkles, but what twinkles? And we have the Star of Venus, um, which is very much to do with Babylon in the corner there, which brings us back to Chariot. Yeah, Chariot, Babylon. Okay. So he talks about the unreach of the philosophers and this kind of thing. We also have the Great Sea as well. Because there's this kind of mixture thing going on, because it's supposed to be to do with the cars that transposed and the past and everything else, it all gets a bit of a mess, quite frankly. So the Star of the Babylon, which of course is the same sigil of the brother of the Argentium Astron, which we talked about in the chariot card. And she's the Scarlet Woman, which is to do with the last card as well. So it looks kind of, kind of, kind of innocent and pure and everything else. And this is Maiden. She's almost like she's having a bath, washing the water over. But now we've got the Lust and the Chariot cards in there as well. Lunt involved. So now, the interesting thing is that he talks about geometry in here, and in particular, three-dimensional, uh, fourth-dimensional geometry of uh, he mentions. Uh, Ryman, Bolia, and Lobachevsky, which is to do with Riemannian geometry, which actually structures the universe itself. And Einstein had used Riemannian geometry in order to create his um, theory of relativity. It's a powerful thing. Again, he quotes the Book of the Law as well, right to the end. So, I'm kind of whizzing through these cards because to go into real detail it takes a lot of effort. Um, I don't mind doing the effort, but I don't want you to fall asleep. So, in the mnemonics, after P comes Hey. No, Hey is the fifth letter. So that should have been back after Dalit. But no, we've transposed Sadi and Hey. So now Hey is out of sequence. And he says, Knew it, our lady of the stars. Event is all, thy plight, sublime experiment. Aquarius is about experimentation and science as well, you see, that's the thing about it. So he kind of, yeah, he's transposed it, but has he? So, <coughs> what does he say about this card? Use all thine energy to rule thy thoughts. Burn up thy thoughts as the phoenix. Hang on a minute. That's the emperor, isn't it? We have to go back to the hay card, the fourth one, which says... Pour water on thyself, thou shalt be a fountain to the universe. This is the Aquarius card, star. Find thou thyself in every star. Achieve thou every possibility. Um, this every man is a star kind of thing you got from the Book of the Law as well, you see. And then, then, then we have to go back to the 17th verse to find the... Um, the meaning of the cards, because of course they swap that backwards as well. So we have hope, unexpected help, clearness of vision, realization of possibilities, spiritual insight with bad aspects, area of judgment, dreaminess, and disappointment. Dreaminess. He's mentioning the next card, which is the moon. <laughs> 